$400 million worth of euros, Swiss francs and other currencies to Iran at the beginning of this year. President Obama says it was simply to settle a financial dispute dating back decades. His critics say it was ransom paid for the release of American prisoners. Either way, the U.S. circumvented its own financial rules, as Yolo Abdafid reports. The accusation is that the U.S. administration paid $400 million at roughly the same time as sanctions against Iran were lifted in January. The sanctions were imposed until Iran agreed to limit its uranium enrichment program. But the U.S. president didn't mention that he sanctioned the delivery of $400 million in cash on wooden pallets to Iran earlier this year. The money was transferred in euros, Swiss francs and other currencies obtained from central banks in Switzerland and the Netherlands. It was delivered to Iran on board an unmarked cargo plane. According to the Obama administration, the money is the first installment of a $1.7 billion settlement of an arms dispute between the United States and Iran dating back to Ronald Reagan's time in office. Officials have dismissed claims that this was a ransom payment in exchange for American prisoners. At the time, we explained that Iran had pressed a claim before an international tribunal about them recovering money of theirs that we had frozen. The administration is adamant that this payment wasn't shady or a ransom. The United States of America does not pay ransom. That there was a separate negotiation track, a separate negotiation that happened to come to be settled at the time, which represents a restoration to Iran of its own money. The Republicans have jumped on reports of the row as the election campaign for the U.S. presidency intensifies. Where does that money go? Who gets that money? I doubt it's the people of Iran. I doubt it. But you say, who gets the money? Then you also say, who's authorized to give cash? The story dates back to when Ronald Reagan was U.S. president and an arms deal with the then Shah of Iran before the 1979 revolution. In 79, Ayatollah Khomeini and his followers took over the country, and payment for an agreed arms deal at the time has been unresolved until this year. Yolo Abdavid, TRT World. Well, let's hear from our editor-at-large now, Craig Capitas, who joins us from Paris. Craig, this is such an intriguing story. The Ayatollah, President Reagan, and now we have piles of cash sent in, uh, you know, unmarked uh, planes to Iran. It's the cash aspect, though, that's really ringing alarm bells, isn't it, Craig? Well, it is. Let's put aside whether this was ransom or not and look at the mechanics of this. This money was paid in foreign exchange because under U.S. law, any transaction in U.S. dollars or going through any U.S. bank to Iran is illegal. Now, um, the U.S. Justice Department w did not want the money to go in this way, and they haven't explained why. But I've spoken with a number of people, and I can tell you why. A number of banks were contacted to do an electronic transfer, but these banks were frightened about violating U.S. law by facilitating electronic transfer. And what's curious about this, Matthew, is all the United States government had to do to transfer this money a normal way, a way in which it could be tracked, was to issue an exculpatory letter to the bank saying, we're not going to prosecute you for executing this transfer. That was never done. Instead, in the dead of night, they transferred close to 8,000 pounds worth of cash from Europe to Iran. And, and this is the precise method that mob, mobsters and drug cartels use. This is Panama Papers stuff. Right. And the problem, of course, Craig, is, uh, as we heard at the end of that report, who gets the cash? Who gets the cash? Right? Not the Iranian people, necessarily. And the problem of tracking uh, hard currency like that is, is much, it's much harder, isn't it, than if it went through uh, electronically? Well, yes, Matthew. It, 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 electronic transfers can be tracked. Expenditures can be tracked. Iran does business with banks. So there was a method, a funnel, to put that into Iranian accounts. 
but instead, and for reasons we no one really understands, and the White House is not answering, because all of this is now involved in this ransom question, is why did the United States government electronically transfer $400 million to U.S. banks, get that money changed into cash, put it aboard a plane, and send it to Iran. There's no okay. way you can trace this money. And Craig, what would happen to an individual or a business that acted in exactly the same way? It'd be in jail. In fact, there are a number of federal court cases right now uh, where bankers and individuals are up on charges for doing this very thing because a bank transaction happened to slip, not because of the... Uh, uh, the the uh, defendant's uh, desire to do it, but a bank just happened to pass it through a U.S. bank. Uh, there's there's about six or seven of these right. cases in the United States. And Craig, we've been so, talking so about four. They, I mean, you have to be very, yeah, you have to be very clear here, Matthew. The United States, in doing this, broke its own law, and it didn't have to. All it needed was an exculpatory letter right. sent to the bank, but they never did that. Okay, Craig Peters in Paris, thank you very much for your analysis.